Hello, I'm Roger Walker. I'm ESA's Technology CubeSat Manager. A CubeSat is a nano satellite uh, in basically in a box size. Uh, standard dimensions of a CubeSat would be uh, 10 by 10 by 10 centimeters, and you can have multiples of, of that unit. So you could have a three unit CubeSat, for instance, 10 by 10 by 30 centimeters, and all of the satellite equipment has to fit inside that box. The origin of CubeSats goes back over 10 years. Um, in the US, uh, university professors were looking for ways to uh, allow their students to essentially build and fly satellite hardware during their degree courses. And so uh, that was envisaged as a very low cost way for universities to get uh, their, uh, their students well educated in, in the engineering skill. My involvement goes back uh, 10 years from when I was working in the, the education office at ESA. So indeed, I was uh, responsible for uh, managing um, university CubeSat uh, projects that we would then later fly on the, uh, the, the maiden flight of the Vega launch. We had seven CubeSats that flew on the Vega maiden flight and actually many students were involved in those projects and they went on to graduate and uh, many of them formed their own spin-off companies which now forms the, the basis of the CubeSat industry today. It became obvious um, about uh, six years ago that CubeSats could be used and had potential for more than education in the space domain and particularly due to their low cost uh, they have a high potential for being able to demonstrate new technologies, innovative technologies that are being developed and need to have a flight in, the, in, in orbit to essentially prove that they can uh, function and be utilised in future operational missions. We partner with small companies uh, in the CubeSat industry, research labs and technology development companies, um, combine them all together to work on projects to get their technology flown in orbit as quickly as possible. When we look at different classes of satellites, the really big satellites uh, carrying many instruments, performing uh, many different scientific uh, objectives, you can equate those to, the, to mainframe computers uh, many years ago. The standard satellites of today uh, are, are, let's say, equivalent to um, PCs, which you might have in, the, in, uh, on, in your home or on your laptop. And CubeSats are essentially equivalent to smartphones, basically um, low power um, but powerful processing capabilities with miniaturized sensors on board and software radios so they can communicate. With the use by CubeSats of commercial electronics and miniaturized sensors, what we're seeing is that the same technologies that are being exploited um, terrestrially for aerial drones are also being exploited by uh, CubeSats. So I like to think that, um, that th that same technology will enable CubeSats to become the, the autonomous drones of the space domain. With the capability of CubeSats um, to become autonomous space drones, they will have the, um, the performance to be able to perform autonomous navigation, close proximity operations around uh, other target uh, objects, and also be able to fly in, in uh, swarm formations. So um, these are very advanced architectures. We might also see them uh, being able to perform autonomous rendezvous and docking together, forming uh, building blocks to build up larger structures in space in the future. So far, CubeSats have been limited to flying in low Earth orbit, but now we're looking at also um, missions to beyond Earth orbit, though now starting to study how CubeSats could contribute to lunar exploration and uh, not only to le learn more about the moon but contribute to technology testing for future exploration missions. When we do the CubeSat projects, of course, the standard en engineering approach uh, combined with the access to um, ESA facilities and technical know-how gives an added value to ESA member states to ensure that we maximise the probability of mission success within the tight financial constraints of each project. So far we've flown one technology CubeSat in orbit, GOMEX-3, 
that mission has been very successful. It's recently re-entered the atmosphere, so the mission has been completed successfully. Now we are preparing to fly another CubeSat called Kalman. It's uh, designed to demonstrate re-entry technologies, very exciting and challenging project. And beyond that, we have an another four technology CubeSats in development, and we're already talking to our member states about starting new, many new projects in the future for these uh, technology demonstrations.